In this CQP web tutorial, I'm going to explain the use of the query history screen. Uh, the query history is one of the functions that you can access from the front page uh, when you first entered a corpus. So it comes up on the standard query by default, but if you look down the uh, left-hand side menu, you will get to this option, Query History, uh, and it's in a section of the, mem uh, of the menu called User Controls because the Query History is one of the uh, options that contains information specific to your user account. So if we go into Query History, we get a display that looks like this. Um, this is a record of all the queries that you've done ever on this corpus on CQP web. Note it's just this corpus, if you've done queries on other corpora you'll have to go out of this corpus into another corpus and look at the query history there. So on this account if we scroll down you will see that on this screen there are the first hundred going back in time so the date is shown over here and you can see we're going back in time here and then you can click on older queries and keep on going back. Uh, this has been a grand total of 158 queries on this account over three years. Uh, so let me just go back. Alright, so uh, you use the you use those two links at the bottom to scroll back and forth through your history. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the different fields here that you can see. Uh, the first field here is just a number, doesn't really mean anything, it's just to help you keep track. Then you have the query itself, i.e. what you typed in. Um, uh, exactly what you typed in before pressing, uh, pressing the Run Query button. Then in this column we've got the restriction or subcorpus that was selected when you ran that query. So if you didn't so restrict your query to uh, a sub part of the corpus then there'll just be a little dash here. Right, so a dash means you search the whole corpus. But if there were textual restrictions, uh, then they'll be listed in that way. And there may also be, um, can I find an example? There may also be cases where um, you've searched within um, a, a subcorpus that you've created yourself. That will be listed there as well. Um, can't find any examples of that, but that appears in this column too. In this column, you've got a record of how many hits were found for that query when you ran it, and then the last is, as I said before, the date and time when you ran the query. The idea of this is that if you've done something and you can't quite remember how you did it, you can come back to the query history and you can uh, loop back until you found it. Uh, likewise, if you've run queries and they haven't quite worked, uh, then you can uh, compare queries that have worked to queries that haven't worked. Um, if it says run error in this column, then it means that the query didn't finish running for some reason, either it timed out, or the query was badly written, or something like that. Um, so that's basically what the query history uh, screen tells you. Let me just explain the three links that you see in this column, this column, and this column. And I'll do it. Uh, I'll do it in non-linear order. In this column, the hits column is a link that you can click on that will take you back to the result of the same query. So if you click it, you will go to the concordance of this whatever happened here. Um, and that might mean retrieving the query from the cache or it might mean rerunning the query from scratch. Uh, you can see in this case the query that I ran previously was still in cache and so it was retrieved and there it is. Uh, same set of hits as before, same 3,447 3, matches. If I now go back, so if that one reruns the query and you can see the little help that pops up says recreate, recreate query result. If that one reruns the query, what do these do? Well, what these two do is they insert the same query string into one of the query windows, either standard query or restricted query. Um, 
and the reason this is useful is if you've done a query and you want to tweak one small thing then you can just click on this link in the query history it'll be reinserted into the query window and you can edit it there so if I click that we should see exactly the same string there it is in the standard query now note that when I originally ran this it was a restricted query using textual restrictions but when I clicked on this link I inserted the query into the standard query if I want to insert it with the same textual restrictions that I had before then I need to use this link okay so I'll do this one for variety there we go and in this case we go to the restricted query screen with the same query string in the query box but then if I scroll down you'll see that several boxes are pre-ticked recreating the same set of restrictions that I used in that part of my query history if I go back to query history so that's the difference between these three columns this link means run the query again straight away this inserts it into the restricted query with the restrictions kept and this inserts it into standard query with um, this inserts it into standard query with um, no restrictions okay so the last thing to explain is this control here the one that says show in CQP syntax what that does is switch the mode by which this column is displayed by default if a column um, if a query is run um, using the simple query syntax it's the simple query syntax that appears here now you can see if you know the difference between the simple query syntax and CQP syntax then you'll be able to see that this query here was actually run in CQP syntax to begin with so that's already showing up in CQP syntax um, but all the others are using the simple query um, mechanisms however if I click here it flips it so that the queries all display using the CQP syntax no matter how they were run in the first place so you can see for instance that the simple query using the lemma notation here of brace go close brace if I click on back to the CQP syntax you'll see that that's the direct equivalent of this string uh, in CQP syntax square bracket HW equals go percentage sign C close square bracket now I'm not going to explain in this tutorial what all of this means um, because CQP is a very complicated language uh, and as you can see the queries can get very complicated quite quickly but if you're just starting out learning CQP syntax when previously you've used the simple query then the query history can be very useful because you can see how we express the same thing in um, uh, in CQP syntax so again another example there is uh, an example where in simple query I wrote a query that said uh, have one or more adjectives or adverbs before the word thing and if we click to CQP syntax line 10 you can see that that is how we express the same thing in uh, CQP syntax if I press if I click on one of these links then it's the CQP syntax that gets inserted and you will see that the query mode here is pre-selected as CQP syntax whereas otherwise it would not be well let me go back uh, back to simple query uh, so yes um, that is I think about it for this tutorial so I shall leave it there thank you for listening